Glass is a material that never gets tired. It doesn't rust, it doesn't decay, and it can be recycled an infinite number of times. Every year, humanity throws away millions of tons of bottles and jars, but more and more of them are getting a second life. Not as new containers, but as something entirely different, foam glass. Foam glass is a lightweight, porous, and incredibly strong material that combines the properties of both glass and foam. It's resistant to fire, water, and time. It's used in construction, industry, insulation, and even in energy systems. But how does a mountain of broken bottles turn into this futuristic material? Today, we'll step inside a massive recycling facility to see how millions of tons of waste glass are transformed into foam glass, the technology of the future born from the waste of the past. It all begins far from the factory, on city streets, and at bottle collection points. Containers marked glass only fill up with bottles and jars that have already served their purpose. Trucks deliver this raw material to recycling centers, where the precise sorting process begins. First, the glass is sorted by color, clear, green, and brown. Optical scanners analyze each shard with laser light and direct it into the proper chute using air jets. Magnets and electromagnetic traps remove metal caps and lids, while powerful airstreams blow away paper labels and plastic residues. After that, the glass goes through a wet cleaning stage. Rotating drums filled with water and detergents completely remove dust and dirt. The cleaned glass then moves on to the crushing stage. At massive crushing stations, the bottles are turned into what specialists call cullent, crushed glass fragments. These mills operate at incredible speed. Thousands of hammers smash the shards until they're the size of grains of sand. The cullet is then sieved through vibrating screens. Large fragments go back into the crusher, while smaller particles move forward along the production line. At this point, the glass looks like sparkling sand, colorful, but perfectly clean. To achieve the right properties, corrective additives such as limestone, dolomite, and soda are added to the cullet. These minerals adjust the viscosity and thermal conductivity of the future foam glass. The mixture is then dried and sent into the furnaces. Now begins one of the most mesmerizing processes of all. At temperatures exceeding 1,000 through 300 degrees, 2,300 chinsebi 2 degrees, the cullet melts into a glowing, viscous lava of liquid glass. The furnace roars, the metal walls vibrate, and the air shimmers with heat. The molten glass flows out of the furnace and into a mixer, where a crucial ingredient is added, the foaming agent. Most often, this is carbon or sulfates, which release gas when heated. As the glass begins to foam, those tiny gas bubbles will give it its lightness and internal structure. Engineers monitor every parameter, temperature, feed rate, and gas concentration. Mistakes are unacceptable here. If the temperature is too low, the glass won't foam. If it's too high, the bubbles will burst, leaving the material brittle and weak. This is the heart of the entire process. The molten gas-enriched glass flows into a long tunnel furnace, a chamber that looks like a gigantic oven. Here, at 900, 1,000 breeds index C, 1 sack is 150, 1 830 the reaction begins. The glass swells and expands, turning into a lightweight, porous mass. Before your eyes, the dense molten ribbon grows several times in volume. Thousands of microscopic bubbles fill the material, forming a structure similar to pumice stone. Each tiny bubble becomes an air capsule that makes foam glass so light and thermally efficient. As the reaction reaches its peak, the conveyor slowly moves the foamed glass towards the next stage, cooling. Precision is vital here. If it cools too quickly, the glass will crack. If too slowly, it will lose its shape. 
Inside the cooling tunnel, the temperature gradually drops from 1,000 degrees to room level. This process takes several hours. The material passes through zones of different temperatures to relieve internal stresses and prevent cracking. When the solidified mass emerges from the end of the line, it's no longer transparent. Instead, it's matte, with a characteristic gray or black surface. This is the finished foam glass, but still in the form of enormous blocks, several meters long. Each block looks like a piece of cooled lava, but weighs several times less than ordinary glass. It's strong, waterproof, fireproof, and has exceptional insulating properties. When the massive solidified blocks of foam glass leave the furnace, they look like monoliths, lightweight, yet incredibly strong. Now they must be transformed into usable building materials. Automated saws equipped with diamond blades cut the blocks into panels, boards, and cubes of various sizes. The cutting process happens at high speed, several dozen meters per minute. Laser sensors monitor accuracy down to the millimeter, since even the slightest deviation can affect the thermal properties of the final product. Some blocks remain in their original form, used in large-scale infrastructure projects where strength and stability are critical, such as tunnel linings and foundation bases. After cutting, the edges are cleaned, special brushes remove glass dust, and the surfaces are polished for perfect smoothness. The finished panels are then stacked and sent for quality inspection. Foam glass undergoes a series of rigorous tests. In factory laboratories, engineers measure compressive strength, water absorption, density, and thermal conductivity. Samples are taken from every batch and placed into testing chambers. Mechanical presses apply several tons of pressure to determine the exact load at which the material begins to deform. The results are impressive. Foam glass can withstand forces comparable to the weight of a truck while remaining several times lighter than concrete. Next, the samples are submerged in water tanks to test moisture resistance. Foam glass remains completely dry. Its cellular structure is airtight, meaning it doesn't absorb water or vapor. That makes it ideal for insulating underground structures and industrial facilities. Each block receives a digital tracking code, allowing engineers to trace every stage of its production, from the batch of recycled glass to furnace parameters. Only after passing all inspections is the material cleared for packaging. On the packaging line, foam glass appears as giant gray cubes, neatly lined up in perfect order. Workers in protective suits inspect each slab for cracks or surface defects, after which robotic arms load them onto pallets. The blocks are then wrapped in heat shrink film and labeled. Each label lists key specifications, density, thermal conductivity, production date, and batch number. Everything is now ready for shipment. Trucks transport the foam glass to construction sites, factories, and energy facilities. In some countries, such as Scandinavia and Germany, foam glass is even used in road construction as a lightweight, moisture-resistant sublayer beneath asphalt. Thus, old glass bottles literally become part of the infrastructure of the future. The journey of foam glass begins in a recycling bin and ends in walls, roads, and foundations. It's born from chaos, from shattered bottles and broken jars, but emerges as a symbol of structure and sustainability. From waste to innovation, from glass shards to a material that protects, insulates, and inspires. Each piece of foam glass is proof that recycling isn't the end. It's the beginning, the beginning of new life for old materials, the beginning of a future where we create not just products, but balance between humanity and nature.